Hey everyone, it's Stephen Wagner with the Tech Journal at www.stephenwagner.com. Today I want to talk to you about some tips and tricks on how to make your vCenter server appliance, vCSA upgrades, a little bit more successful and how to deal with the backup and recovery process should you come across a failed vCSA upgrade. So, number one, configure your vCSA appliance upgrade, uh, configuration backups. So if you log into the management interface of your vCenter server appliance, you can configure a configuration backup and shoot these backups off to an HTTP, FTP, NFS, or SMB destination. Now, everyone has a Windows file share, uh, server. Everyone, most people have NFS data stores. So there's literally no excuse. Configure these backups, have them run on a daily basis. And it's great because it'll protect you against failed VCSA upgrades. And it'll also protect you should a disaster happen. And let's say something's wrong with your snapshot based upgrades. You'll have these configuration uh, up backups so that you can create a new VCSA appliance and restore these configuration backups. So now the next step, number two, this is the way that System administrators typically back up their VCSA when they're doing a VCSA upgrade, snapshots. Now, I've talked to a lot of a lot of other system administrators and most will actually just snapshot the appliance while it's running. They exclude the RAM contents. So in the event that they have to restore the snapshot, um, it uh, the VM thinks that it was just a non-graceful restart. Now, you should always at a minimum do this. This was the de facto way to back up your VCSA appliance before performing an upgrade. Now, one thing that I've learned, and this leads to number three, is I've done a lot of upgrades that failed, and I noticed that if I were to do a graceful restart of the VCSA appliance before doing an upgrade, all of a sudden I went from having a one in three upgrade failing ratio to all of a sudden now my upgrades don't fail at all. So number three, is just take the time to do a graceful shutdown and restart of your VCSA appliance. Um, I, it's, it's just changed all my VCSA upgrades. I do it on my customer sites. I do it in my own home lab configuration and all of a sudden upgrades stopped failing. Now this jumps back to number two. If you follow my third tip and recommendation of shutting down the VCSA appliance, now all of a sudden you can take this opportunity to do a crash consistent snapshot of the VCSA appliance when it's powered off. So it's a graceful shutdown. There's no crash. There's no non-graceful restart of it. Um, so you'll increase the chances of a successful VCSA upgrade and you'll have a crash consistent snapshot that you can restore. Those are my three tips. Now, as far as failed upgrades go, I have one big tip for in the event of a failure, let's say that you have to do some type of recovery, do it as soon as possible. Um, it, with my own experience, I noticed that if you have an upgrade that either failed or if you have an upgrade that was marked as successful, however, there were errors and things don't seem to be functioning properly. You're noticing abnormalities inside of the uh, vCenter server uh, management interface. You're noticing some things aren't working. There's errors on the vCenter server. Um, you need to make the decision to restore fairly quickly because there is some data, port group link numbers, um, the port groups that VMs attach to, DRS data, a whole bunch of stuff that if you wait too long to make the decision to restore from backup, um, when you do make the ultimate decision to restore from backup, you might have some issues. Like for example, there was one time where I waited one or two days to do a restore from a snapshot that I did um, after a VCSA upgrade that was marked as successful but had errors. And what ended up happening is that after restoring the snapshot backup, um, I noticed that a number of my VMs uh, couldn't talk on the network. Um, including the VCSA, which wasn't good. And I believe that it's because the configuration on the VCSA, the vCenter server, didn't match the configuration um, networking in particular with what was done on the ESXi host because over time that data changes. So again, just a big stress that if you feel that the upgrade may have failed or there may be abnormalities, do the restore sooner or later. You're a lot more likely to have less issues if you choose to do the restore sooner than later. I actually recommend doing it within an hour if you think that the upgrade has failed. So anyways, those are my tips and tricks. I hope this video helped. Leave a comment, like the video, and thanks for watching.